too busy that he can't reach way down and mend your broken heart and your burden well it's not too heavy that he can't hear your plea of faith God still answers prayer will be there with you no matter what you're going through. God still answers fed by my master who watches them grow and we
my Jesus, he's never too busy to care about you. I'd we
precious friend. Whoo, hallelujah. I'm going to step over to 152, Donna, instead of 151. The I know whom I have believed. What a friend. Hallelujah. Let's stand together, 152, in your church hymnal. singing this morning turn around shake hands one with another smile and wave if you can't get to them and as the pastor comes you can be seated amen what a friend we have in jesus amen wonderful singing today my i felt the sweet holy spirit this morning and i enjoy it very much and i praise god for the church i praise god for you being here if you're visiting with us we're happy to have you if you're here for the first time lift your hand the ushers will bring you a card fill it out and drop it in the offering bag in a little bit want to mention now this evening at 6 30 we'll be back and we want everybody to come back tonight and have a good time in the lord our christmas service now will be december the 23rd at seven o'clock that's on the friday night before christmas and uh, we will not have services on christmas day but we're going to have our christmas service on december the 23rd and then uh, you pray about that that's going to be a great time you know, we don't know the exact date Jesus was born. We celebrate the 25th, but we don't know for sure if that was the day he was born. Let me see if I can see this. Now, to my church family, with a grateful heart, I, was, I want to say thank you for the calls, the messages, the cards that uh, I received and the visits. But above all, I thank God for the prayers. I felt each and every prayer and I felt blessed that you and you were praying for me and my family. I especially thank Sammy Jr. for the visits, the prayers, and the encouragement that he gave. And this is from Roger and uh, Wanda Gossett. She's here today. Let's give her a big hand. She's been through it. Amen. And we just appreciate it so very much that you're back in the house of God. Wanda, we missed you. We love you and thank God for you. All right, ushers, you may come. We'll receive the tithes and offerings you give today as the Lord has blessed you, and he certainly has blessed us, hasn't he? Amen. Amen. Brother Rick, lead us in a word of prayer. 
Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us back in your house one more time, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit you've blessed us thank with you. this morning, Amen. Lord. We thank you for this choir, Amen. Lord, and Brother Sammy and the musicians, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'd continue to touch them this morning, Lord. Lift them thank up, you. Lord, as they sing for your glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we do have a Father that answers our prayers, Lord. No matter what they are, Lord, you answer them on time, in time, and every time, Lord, according to your will, Lord. Lord, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you in the free pardon of sin, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would burden their hearts, Lord, and let them experience some of this that we feel in this morning, Lord. Bring them to you, Lord, if it be your will, Lord. We thank you for our Sunday school this morning, Lord, and what was felt and taught there, Lord. Bless it, Lord, I pray, Lord. For all those that are sick today and couldn't be with us, I pray, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord. Heal them according to thy will, Lord. Those that are facing battles, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord. And just be with them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every tear that was shed this morning, every knee that was bowed, and every hand that was raised, Lord. Have your will and way in the remainder of this service this morning, Lord. Bless Brother Sammy as he comes before us. Continue to strengthen him, Lord. Lift him up, Lord, and strengthen him from on high, Lord. Bless this offering for us in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. 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 Good singing today, church, choir. We appreciate it so very much. Turn to Proverbs for a few minutes this morning, if you will, please. Proverbs chapter number 10. This is on, uh, yeah, 10 
on page 679. 679. Boy, I tell you, that choir got me stirred up this morning. <clears throat> I feel I feel real good inside. Uh, let me look at verse number 22 with you today. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Underline that little old word, rich. And he addeth no sorrow with it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about rich. This is a different kind of sermon than I usually preach, but I want to preach on riches anyway because I think it's important. I think about our young people a lot. I have them on my mind. I have them on my heart. I pray for them. We have young people that are going to be, you know, running jobs one of these days. Some of them already are, and they're going to be making a way for their life, and they're going to be seeking the best, the best way to go and how to make the most money and all this legitimately. They want to be uh, honest and truthful and all that, but they're going to have a real task before them, and uh, they might go the wrong way if they're not careful. They might be tempted to be dishonest or to lie or to steal. Don't ever do that, young people. Make your way following God. God will make a way. He'll give you riches, both spiritual and uh, physical, if you'll trust in Him. Rich means possessing great wealth, owning much land or mo uh, wealth, uh, money, and different sorts of wealth. You can be rich by owning uh, material things like silver and gold and diamonds and other things like that. Many things, many people are rich today, and riches uh, are abundant. I mean, riches means abundant wealth. And so a lot of folk attain to that. A lot of people get rich in their life, and they're able to have about anything they want. But the thing about it is, is that what God wants for you? And now, I know God's going to supply every need, and I know God's not uh, uh, against anybody getting rich. It's all right. It's not a sin, but as long as you do it right and not leave God out. But now here's the thing about it. I want to mention very briefly worldly riches and spiritual riches in comparison, in contrast, and show you something here, young people. But when we talk about uh, worldly riches, we think about many things. I won't be able to name them all, but let me just say that whenever we uh, consider worldly riches, the first thing we can think about as a spiritual person is that uh, spiritual, uh, physical or these worldly riches can cause, as possible, that can cause forgetfulness. The Bible says over in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 13, And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold multiply, and all that thou hast multi is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord. Now here's the thing, whenever multiplication, Simplicity of things come when riches come, and this is this coming to fruition, and, and we get so excited because we're making a, a good living, and we're selling good uh, products, and we're making a commission or whatever. Ever how we're doing it, whenever it starts coming in, and we go to make it a lot, then sometimes, and I've seen this a lot in my ministry, we forget God. He said, you forget God, the Lord God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage. I brought you out of slavery. I brought the burden off of you. I got all of that taken care of, God said. But after you got to the place you can multiply your wealth, then you forgot God. And the Bible tells us over in Jeremiah, my people have forgotten me days without number. This is not good. We mentioned this all along the way, but we don't want our young people to forget God. We want you to be raised up in this fundamental church. But some of our young people, when they are raised up in this fundamental church, if things don't go exactly like they think it ought to go, they get out. And sometimes parents don't encourage them to stay in. Now, parents encourage your children, love your children, and encourage them to stay in church and stay with God, stay with the Bible, make sure they love the Bible, that they give attention to the Bible. And this is not preaching to them all the time now. This is not beating them over the head with the Bible. It's talking about getting things in their heart that will keep them going. As y'all have sung beautifully today, brother, he'll be with you no matter what the situations are, no matter how dire the safe straits are, he'll be with you if you'll follow his leadership. And so, my friend, don't forget God. Don't forget God. My friend, he's your friend, though your greatest friend. He's your Savior. He's the one that washed you in his blood. 
And so stick with him all the way. And brother, whenever it comes time, and the day will come when you'll have to die. <clears throat> and you'll be glad you serve the Lord if you live for him. So many people cannot handle prosperity and spirituality at the same time. It seems they just cannot handle it. They can't get prosperous in this life without forgetting God. Now, don't be that way. Oh, I've talked with people several times, and I said, why did you quit church? Why did you quit God? Well, we got a boat. Well, we got a lake house, and we go to the lake on Sunday. We do this. We do that. Listen, that is not praising God. That's not giving God glory for he's, what he's given you. There's nothing wrong with a boat, nothing wrong with a lake house, nothing wrong with fishing and hunting and all the rest of that fun, but don't let any of that take the place of the Lord. Now, I've seen it a number of times in the years that I've been here, and God tells us in 1 Peter to add to our faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, charity, love. God said add to your spiritual life all of these things. In 1 Peter 1.8, he said, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful. Be, he said, In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten, hath forgotten that he was purged of his old sins. Have you forgotten that you got saved? Have you forgotten when Jesus saved your soul? We sing, I remember the day or the night when I got saved. We raise our hand. Do we really mean that? Do you believe? Do you remember when you got saved? Brother, hallelujah, don't ever forget that. We cannot live in the past, I know that. But, brother, we can live in, in uh, retrospect, looking back, saying, I remember that night or that day when God got a hold of my heart, and he just absolutely broke my heart, and I received Jesus into my heart by faith, and I've never been the same since Jesus came in. Brother, this is a real salvation that we're talking about. So then we know that whenever we get worldly w r rich, when riches come in, worldly riches, if we're not careful, we'll be become forgetful. But not only will earthly uh, and uh, these worldly riches cause us to be forgetful, but it'll cause us to be impatient. Over in Psalm 31, 22, the psalmist said, For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. In verse uh, 7 of 116, he says to his soul, Now return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. I can't see in, in this church today not one person that has not been blessed abundantly. I'm not talking about, you know, a millionaire, 10 million, 20 million. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, some of you may have. I think some of you do. But the thing about it is, you have been blessed. I can look around here. Everybody looks so blessed. Everybody looks like they got on a fine. And listen, you don't have to have fine clothes to come here now. You know that. You can come here any kind of way you want to. You can come to this church. As long as you're decent, you can come here. Somebody said uh, some time ago that Sammy K said you couldn't come to his church in blue jeans. That's the biggest lie that the devil ever told. I've never said anything like that. I don't care if you come in overalls. You remember Charlie Lauder? He'd sit right over here, and he wore overalls everywhere he went. I'm talking about the gallus kind, you know. And he wore those overalls. Nobody ever paid that any attention. He was always clean, decent, nice. And I've seen him sit in their fellowship before with a fella with a $400 suit on. And they weren't paying any attention to each other's clothing. They were just put praising God. They were worshiping the Lord. And that's great. You need to read the book of James if you want to find out how to treat people when they come to church. Everybody in this church is welcome. And we don't say to a certain person, you sit right here in the fine place, and you go back down in the back and find you a place. We don't do people that way. Everybody is welcome to come and sit wherever they want to sit. And uh, sometime we'll have somebody get a little bit offended, and they'll say a visitor came, and one came one time, and this uh, woman said, uh, Slip over, you're in my seat. Uh, that ain't right either. You can say, Brother Samuel, you're not supposed to say ain't. Well, that's a good word for what I'm preaching. You're not supposed to tell somebody that's, that's my seat. I got a seat right here, but I wish you'd fill every one of those spots up and I'd have to stand. You think I'm lying? I'm not lying. I'd be willing to stand all during the service if you'll fill that pew up. 
Amen. I want you to come and sit wherever you want to sit. We all, have, we got a plaque over there, people that bought pews and all that. But we didn't buy them for ourselves. We bought them for God. They belong to God, every one of them. Everything in this church belongs to the Lord. And so you're welcome to come and worship the Lord with us no matter what you're dressed in. And so he said, I want to return to that rest. You know, if you ever get away from God, there'll come a day when you would to God, you were back where you used to be, where I praise God, I worship God, I felt the whole, hallelujah, I felt the Holy Spirit of God moving up and down in my soul. I, I felt like I just wanted to fly away. I want to go back to that. I want the joy. I want the peace. I, I had it one time. If you're backslidden on the Lord, uh, that's where you need to go. You need to go back to where you got Jesus into your heart. And I tell you right now, go back to where you lost him. Now, he didn't lose you, and you're not going to hell if you've ever been saved. I want you to know that because some people backslide on the Lord. Sometimes worldly riches cause that. They'll cause us to backslide on the Lord, and we become impatient. But not only can this worldly wealth uh, cause us to forget and cause us to be impatient, but it can cause us to be deceptive. Now, the Bible says in Mark, Mark chapter 4, 19, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Riches can deceive. They surely can. And the lust of other things in and in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now, if you want the Word of God to do you no good, you just get the deceitfulness of riches in your heart, and brother, the Word of God can't work in your life. And my friend, the Bible tells us that very clearly. The Word is good seed all the time, no matter where it falls. Good seed. The Word of God is never bad seed. It always falls, and wherever it falls, it falls on good ground, bad ground, rocky ground, uh, uh, browery ground, all kinds of ground is where the word falls. But it doesn't take the same effect in all of these grounds. Now, so, uh, Satan, he, he, he will deceive your heart. He will cause you to be blinded, trying to get you away from the Word of God. The devil does not want these young people to grow up with a Bible in their hand and in their heart. He doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to get away from this. This is a thing that the world hates tonight, today. They hate it. I talked about it in Sunday school. The world's getting worse and worse. And my friend, to see what they're voting on now, and then our president's going to sign a stupid thing. Everybody's going to hell, it looks like. They don't want God in their life. Well, let me tell you something, young people. don't matter what they want. You keep God in your life. You let God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. And I told him, and I mean it from the depths of my heart. I'll scream it all across this country, wherever I'm heard. I'm a Jesus man. I got born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus, and I'm not ashamed one little bit that I got saved by the grace of God. In Mark chapter 4, verse 20, they which are sown on good ground, talking about the seed now, he said those seeds that are sown on the good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth what? Fruit. Bring forth fruit. Uh, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. I mean, hey, you're going to bring some fruit if you let the word of God fall on good ground. You receive the word of God into your heart. Now, we must hear and obey the words of God and be trustful. We must trust him every day. The psalmist said in Psalm 101, verse 6, he that walketh in a perfect way, a mature and a Christian way, the right way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. God said, you may be saved, but let me tell you something. I'm not pouring my blessing out on you. If you're lying, if you're stealing, you're cheating, you're, you're not going to be blessed like you would be if you'd straighten your act up and quit your thievery, quit all this stealing, and quit all this lying. Now, worldly ambitions and worldly activities deceive hearts many times. And, of course, are you zealous today over anything? Are you zealous for worldly Riches are spiritual riches. Now, we find right here the cause 
of these things by because of, uh, of uh, physical, literal, worldly riches, we forget. We get impatient. And then, of course, we are deceived. Now, I could go on with some other things, but my time wouldn't permit it. Let me say this. Over in Proverbs chapter 13, the Bible says in verse 7, and listen closely now, there is that maketh himself rich. A man, some men, make themselves rich, yet hath nothing. In other words, he's putting on an act. He's putting on a show. He's pretending to be wealthy. He's pretending to have a lot. But he said he has nothing. There is that man also that is poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. Now, here he says, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Now, some pretend to be rich and well off and living high on the hog, so to speak. They're living above their means. Some people are living way above their means, and they're appearing to be <coughs> rich. They're appearing to have plenty, and they want to impress their peers that I've got a lot. I am wealthy. I'm rich. But really they don't have, but they won't let you know their lack. They're lacking a lot. They're living above what they ought to be living. So they ought to come down off their high horses, so to speak, and live within their means. And I would advise all you young people, don't try to keep up with your grandpa. Don't try to keep up with grandma. Hey, stay where you are and grow. Grow little by little. Honest, being honest and truthful. Don't steal a thing. Don't ever steal a thing. My daddy was a rough man, but he said if you ever find $500, and if you can get that $500 and find the person it belongs to, do it. But if you can't, leave it right where it is. It's not yours. You didn't make it. You didn't earn it. And he was an honest man. My daddy was. He, that's one thing I can say about him. He was very honest. So some people pretend to be well off when they lack. They, they really lack some things, but they're living above their means, and they're up to debt to their ears. They just keep on getting in debt more and more. But then he goes on to say, some pretend to be poor and live below their wealth. They live below when before their peers they appear to be pitiful. You know, they got money in the bank, drive a good car, everything's fine, and then they play pitiful. In other words, I don't have anything. I just can't buy that. I can't afford that. And all the time they got a big bank account. They won't spend theirs, they want to spend yours. I've seen people in my ministry, honest before the Lord, I can't, they couldn't buy a meal. They would be with some friends, and they'd say, let's go in here and eat. Well, I can't afford to. I, I don't have, we don't have the money to buy that. All right, we'll buy it for you. We'll buy you meal. So they buy the meal. But then next week, they go to Walmart, and that lady's going down the side there with a basket full of goodies. Where'd she get the money all of a sudden? Walmart didn't give it to her. But she wanted people to think she was poor so she could get something for nothing. That's wrong. That's stealing. That's sinning. That's lying. That's lying. When are we going to start living right? When are Christians going to start getting rid of all this sin in their life? So listen, you say, Brother Sam, you're making me mad. Yeah, we talked about those two witnesses in Revelation. They made the Antichrist mad too. And he killed them, but God let him. But they rose from the dead and went to heaven. So these people are really putting on a show, poor mouthing. You know what a poor mouther is? Well, I'll get off of that because I want us to consider spiritual riches also. I want to turn over here to Proverbs chapter 8 for just a minute. Proverbs chapter 8, I love them that love me and those that seek me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches. Look here. Now, we're talking about spiritual riches now, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. God said, if you love me and you follow me, I got more riches than anybody in this country. 
and mine will last. See, the, all the worldly riches are limited in uh, value and in duration. They have a certain value, and that's it. They have a time when it, there won't be any more of it. It'll be gone. But when you come to spiritual riches, these riches are unlimited, and they are eternal. He said durable, endure forever and ever. So they're lasting. Not only are they lasting, but they're unsearchable. Over there in Ephesians 3, 8, Paul said unto me, who am less than the least of the saints is the grace given to me that I should, that I should uh, preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Unsearchable riches. You can't fathom the riches of God, riches of God and of being a Christian, living for God, and living right. Live right. Just live right all the time. Don't, if some sin comes up before you, say no. Somebody offer you a, some kind of a sinful offer that would make you money, say no, because you'll be better off to follow God. My friend, these are unsearchable. That means beyond reach, imponderable. In Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and <coughs> knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. We've got something. <coughs> that's greater <coughs> than the world, than the world has. <coughs> Romans eleven thirty six, For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. So spiritual riches are lasting. They are unsearchable and they are rewarding. Think about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Young people, Moses is a man we all know about. You know where he is now? He's in heaven. He's in heaven with God. And did you know what about Moses? Moses looked as a young man, looked at all of Egypt. He was top man. He could have had everything there, all the treasures of Egypt. But he said, no, I'm going with God. I'm going with God's people. Because you know why? He saw what was ahead. He saw the reward that's going to be to those that go with God. And let me tell you something you cannot lose if you follow the Lord. And let me say this, rewarding, rewarding is what Moses was looking at. The rewards from God are much greater. Now, there's a do that I want to mention here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Now, I'm reading it out of the Word of God. Out of the Word of God. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves do break through and steal. Do not, do not. Then here's a do. Here's a do in Matthew 6, 20. He said, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. This is the Bible I'm reading now. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt but where, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Matthew 6, 21, for where, where your heart is, wherever your treasure is, there's where your heart is. So wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And then let me go over here now and say one more thing and close before I close. Spiritual riches are motivating riches. Philippians 3, 12. 3, 12 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, are riches, but honor and, li and life. And then Proverbs 24, 3, he says, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers or the rooms be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You want your house to be rich? You want it to be a real rich house, full of rich, every room full? Boy, can't you walk in every room of your house and say, praise the Lord, before what you, he's given you? You've got a bed here. You've got a kitchen there. You've got a stove there. You've got everything you need got everything in the world you need. And then the assuring riches in Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches, exceeding riches of his grace 
in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. In Proverbs 10, 22, our text says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. You don't have to be sorrowful and worry if you get things honest and decent. Now, in closing, worldly riches cause forgetfulness sometimes. In, in impatience, deception, and sorrow. That's what worldly riches can do. But spiritual riches are lasting, unsearchable, motivating, rewarding, and assuring. We have assurance that everything is all right. Are you going to seek for worldly, or are you going to seek for spiritual riches? Let's stand to our feet. And if you're here, and you know, if you want to get saved, I know this is not evangelistic, but... I felt like preaching it because I felt like some of our young people, you know, they're getting ready to go out now and uh, work, make their own living and make their own way. And I just want you young people to go the right way. My burden, you're on my heart, and I'm praying for you, and I love you, and I want God to bless you in your life to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our church. Thank you for these young people that we have. And, Lord, we see a lot of small children coming on also. And we're blessed with those. And, Father, we know that children are an heritage of the Lord. We know that whenever they get grown, they're still our children. We still love them. We want the best for them. And I pray that these children and our young people will take heed to God's Word. And they can have fun. They can have a good time without sinning, without going into sin, ruining their, wrecking their lives. They don't have to do that. They can live for God.